Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me turn it on. Hallelujah. Hey, we're glad to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. We are so blessed to be back here in Little Beaver, Utah. I am so blessed to be here. Beautiful day. And so we are excited about what God's going to do. I, I had a wonderful holiday. I got to see both my, 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 my children, one in Idaho and one in Texas. And so it was a great holiday. And I'm looking forward to it. I, I told my wife this morning, I said, we gotta, we're ready to go back to work now. <laughs> and so I'm really excited about what God's going to do in this upcoming year. Yeah. And I really got a, I, I've got a word that I want to share with you in just a moment. But before I do, I want to introduce my lovely wife, Meliana. Give Meliana a hand as she comes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He is right. We, uh, it was wonderful. We had a great time with our family. But I tell you what, I, could, I was not... Um, I was so looking forward to get back into his presence. Even though we are in his presence everywhere we go, but there is nothing compared to being at church. Amen? Yeah. And I just, I just want to ask you again, if let's all lift up our hand again oh, yeah. and thank oh. him for abiding in our midst yeah. this morning. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, as Pastor Marty, oh God, sharing, oh God, of how much you love us, oh God. We just want to say thank you, Lord. We want you, Lord, to know that you are loved yeah, yeah. in this place. We love you, God, for what you have done. Thank you, Father, for all of us being here. We all had a great time with families and friends in Christmas time. But here we are again in your presence. We love you, we adore you, and we worship you, God. And we just want to take this moment again to acknowledge your presence here. Again, you are so welcome in this place, Lord. And you are so loved in this place. Come and have your way. Come and speak to us. Change us again through your word. As we give you all the glory and honor to glorify your name, Lord. We love you. We bless you. And we worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's give Jesus another big hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, I have a scripture over here I want to read to you because uh, it really blessed me the last few weeks because we travel so much. And, um, and I, I want to read to you book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read to you verse 11 and 12 from um, New Living Translation. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 and 12. It says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You can read the whole chapter because it is powerful. but. I, I, this was came to me because because we travel so much and sometimes I'll be driving down the road and all of a sudden I see a cops okay waiting on the side of the freeway or all of a sudden he'll drive by me or if I speeding down the, the, the freeway I see a cops right on my side and guess what that police car does to me it caused me to slow down, okay? <laughs> it caused me to pay attention. What is the speed limit? What is the speed limit? It, it's not only, I'm sure some of you it happened, okay? But what that police guard does to me, it made me aware to keep the rules, to keep the law, okay? It caused me to slow down and pay attention because there is someone, somebody 
right close by me that have the authority it caused me to keep the law, okay? Now, when I was reading this scripture, God, it reminded me that I have to put on the full armor that God has given me and you. So that way, all the demonic spirits around me, every time they see me, they will automatically keep the law, keep the rules, okay? In other words, they will not bother me. I will be driving down in my, I mean, I'll be minding my own business in life. But every demonic spirit around me will have to keep the rule. They will not bother me. Amen. Again, Amen. what I'm trying to say, I have to keep the peace of God in my mind, okay? Fill my heart with his joy, with his love, with his with his peace. Because I seen so many Christians many times in life, they'll be coming, driving down in life, got into an accident. Why? Because they are not putting on the full armor that God has given them. But how can we get, how can we put on the full armor that God has given us that only come through spending time with Him yeah. in prayer and yeah. in His Word? Yeah. Amen? Last night, I tell you what, didn't have enough sleep because I have a friend called, text me because she's a Christian because of the situation that she's going through. Come to find out, she allowed all the vain imagination consume her mind and her heart, left her husband, went into her family, her relatives, and I talked to her and I said, can you see how you allowing all, that all the wrong spirit come and have a full control in your mind and your heart because you're not putting on the full armor of God that he has made available to you. But I believe that is the word of God for you and I as we start in the 2014, we are going to put on the full armor of God that he has made available to us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Give Jesus another hand clap. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready for the Word of God? Hallelujah. Are you ready for the Word of God? Yeah. Now, I haven't preached for a week, so be prepared to have your ghost burned today because I haven't preached for a week. As I was sitting here, actually, I'm going to turn to a text in the Old Testament. Uh, but I was in worship. I, as we came in and we were leading worship, and as our brother began to sing, uh, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, the, I, I just, it dawned on me that we're right around the corner is 2014. And then all of a sudden I hear the word of the Lord say to Beaver, tell them that in 2014, I will be clearly seen in them. Okay. And, and then the Lord reminded me of John 14, Amplified Version. And I just want to turn there because this is a, this is a verse and I'm not going to preach this verse. We're going to turn over to, to 2 Kings uh, chapter 4 in just a moment, verse 8. But it says, then the person who has my commands and keeps them. This is the Amplified. How many have God's commands? How many keep God's commands? is the one who really loves me. In other words, love is not seen in just my verbiage. Love is seen in my action. And when I love, by loving him, is because I keep his commands and I follow them. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. Now, I love this part. And I too will love him, and listen, and will show, reveal, manifest myself, and I, and I will let myself clearly be seen by him and make myself real to him. Amen. Oh man. Oh, wow. oh how many want how many want yeah. God, to, God to make himself real to you? Yeah. You know, if you brush your Bibles, I want you to turn now because I'm going to talk about a story and how we can make God make himself real to us. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. We're going to break this verse down 
I've preached on this text before. However, today I'm going to preach it much differently because the Lord had given me some insights regarding this particular text. I'm going to read from the New King James. And I'm going to start in verse 8. Very familiar story about the prophet and this woman. Now it says these words. Now it happened one day that Elijah went to Shunem and there was a notable woman. Everybody say a notable woman. Notable. You have to understand here. And actually, I should probably preach these in two sermons, but I'm going to make one sermon out of it. I'm going to have to lay a foundation of the first part and then go into the second part. But when the word said a notable woman, that means that this woman was well to do. She had nobility. She had influence, which means I'm going to tell you something. God is in increasing the influence of his people in this coming year. Yeah. And he, in other words, he, in other words, she has wealth. She has prosperity. She has everything that money could buy. However, there's something that she desires. Because there's something that I desire. In the midst of increase, in the midst of God blessing us, there's something that I want more than the blessing. Come on, church. I love the God. I love the fact that we have influence. I love the fact that we can we can uh, empower more people and begin to uh, impact more people. I realize that. But the bottom line is this. She says this. I love this. She says, and she persuaded him to come and eat. So when it was often as he passed by, he would turn in there and eat some food. In other words, here's what she was saying. She was saying, listen, I have all the wealth. I have all, everything money could buy. But there's something that I want. Because I don't want the, the prophet is a representation of God's presence and God's word. In other words, I don't want the presence and the word to just pass by. Come on, are you hearing me? I don't want to come to church and just have the prophetic word, the promises of God pass by. I want the presence of God to come and stay. Come on, church. Because here's what we need, and if anything that we need in this coming year. If God, because what God wants to do here in Beaver, what He wants to do in our lives, is that there's an understanding. I recognize something, that we have to have the Word and the presence in our house. It's just not...